Revelation 4. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you the things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts, full of eyes before and behind. The first beast was like a lion. The second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle, and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Greetings, friends. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean, your host. Website, www.scriptureandprophecy.com. That's where you go to find the archives. That's where you go to support this mission of truth. Thank you for joining me this morning for this week's Haftarah the prophet's portion and uh, before I get into that let me just say this the fear of the Lord according to Proverbs 9.10 is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding part of the problem part of our sin problem and our uh, just the, the issues that we're seeing within the church, within the country, within the world. A lot of it re is a result of a lack of fear of God. And therefore, a lot, a lack of wisdom. We have a bunch of Christians who are actually fools, according to the scriptures. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Which means you can't even start to be wise. You can't even begin to be wise until you have a proper fear and understanding of God and God's holiness. And I've been thinking about that a lot this week. So much so that earlier this week I thought to myself, I don't know what the Haftarah is on the schedule this week, what the prophet's portion is. It's on a week, as you know, it's a, it's a predetermined schedule that's been followed for thousands of years. But I said to myself, regardless of what's on the schedule this week, I'm at least going to uh, speak on the scriptures in Isaiah where he goes into the throne room and he sees God for who God really is. And wouldn't you know it, I open up to see what this week's portion is. And it starts with Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 through 7, through chapter 7, 6, which deals with that very scripture. I did not know that that was going to be on the schedule. 
it blew me away when I opened it up and I saw that and I was like, wow, this is truly what God wants us to discuss, wants us to chew on his holiness. That's why I started the scriptures or the sort of the podcast today with the scripture out of Revelation where John sees the same similar thing and he gives us even more details about these angels that are around the throne of God who never rest day or night. They say nonstop they're saying holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy. As you know, in the, Jew, in the Hebrew language, when something's repeated a couple of times, um, even throughout a paragraph, if it's said more once or twice or three times, it's a point of emphasis. It's to say, hey, pay attention to this thing. This is really, 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 really true, right? And that's, why we, that's what we see here is holy, holy, holy. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. The prophet's portion today is Isaiah chapter 6 through chapter 7, verse 6, and then it picks up and grabs uh, uh, three verses from, or two verses from Isaiah 9, 5 through 6. So that is what is on the schedule for today. There's more that I want to say, more that I want to talk about, and we'll get to these other scriptures as we move through this study. So, without further delay, let's go ahead and start our reading out of Isaiah chapter 6, starting with verse 1, the King James Bible. Here's what it says. In the year... The king Uzziah died. I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twains he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Let's stop. Because I'm afraid people are going to miss this. Again, Isaiah, John, they see the same thing, right? They see these angelic beams, seraphims as they're called, six wings. They go around the throne crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Isaiah is seeing this. He's seeing the fullness of God here, at least to the extent that he is able to see without dying, right? That's why the room fills with smoke to kind of cover him and shade him a little bit. He sees that the train of God fills the whole temple. These angels are flying around, holy, holy, holy. John says, his, the whole earth is full of his glory. He said, I saw the Lord on that day, sitting on his throne, high and lifted up. Now, this is the part I don't want you to miss. When Isaiah sees who God truly is, his holiness, what happens is Isaiah then understands who he is. And this is the part I think that we don't get because we lack the understanding. We lack the true fear of the Lord, the true understanding of just how holy he is in comparison to us and just how awful and wicked and filthy we are. Isaiah sees this and he immediately falls to his face and pronounces a curse on himself. He says, woe is me, I am undone. 
because I am a man of unclean lips, and, and I dwell amidst the people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. I don't know about you, friends, but as of lately, I've just been getting a sense of my own self, my own flesh, my own sin, and I've been thinking, I am just filthy. I am filthy, and to make matters worse, I live in a culture, a society that's the maybe the filthiest it's ever been in the history of the world. You probably have to go back to Genesis 6. You probably have to go pre-flood before you can find a generation as evil as the generation that dwells on the earth now. That is as wicked and perverse, and even the most righteous among us, we're surrounded with it, and we have to wrestle with it ourselves every day. Isaiah says, I'm undone. I'm a man of unclean lips, and to make matters worse, I dwell a bunch of, uh, I dwell in the midst of people who are even more unclean than I am. And now I've seen the king, and, and I'm cursed. I'm in big trouble. Now check this out. Verse 6, next verse. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the thong, with tongs from the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and the iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. You see, we are filthy. And only the Lord, only the King, only the Lord of hosts, Yehovah Savaot. Only He can purge you of your sin. You can't clean yourself. You have to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. You know, the very first chapter in Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah, the book we're reading in our portion from today, very first chapter, one of the most famous verses, verse 18, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Only the blood of Christ can cleanse us, can cover our sins. Only God can purge us of our sins. We, it cannot be done in our own strength. And I, I feel like Isaiah, like I said, I'm an unclean man and I live amongst unclean people. I feel like Peter. You remember the story? Luke chapter 5. Let me just read it real quick. Okay, just 10 verses, and then we'll get back to Isaiah. It says, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by, he stood by the lake of Gesaret. And he saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and he prayed him that he would trust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. And when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net." And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net brake. And they beckoned unto other parties, which were in other ships, that they would come and help them. And they came, and they filled both ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. There's just something about that line that I can just resonate with. Maybe some of you can resonate with where you're like, Lord, I'm, depart from me. I'm, I'm, I'm a sinful man. I can't be in your presence, right? Verse 9, he says, For he was astonished, and at all that were with him, and the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. He's saying, Don't be afraid. 
God has a purpose for you. Isaiah, same thing. He says, woe is me, I am undone. But then the seraphim goes and he grabs his hot coal and he pushes it, puts it to Isaiah's lips. And he says, your sins have been purged. Let's continue on, verse 8. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. Oh, Lord, that we would have that mindset, that we would be like Isaiah, that we would say in our hearts, with our whole hearts, Send me. Here I am, send me. Verse 9, he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. Hold up. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Jesus, right? He spoke in parables, and they said, why do you speak in parables? I'm paraphrasing. This is Sean's commentary. Why you paraphrase? Why you speak to these people in parables, but then you tell us everything so that we can understand it? And he says, so that they, lest they hear and be saved. That is so strange. Why? Because they're not appointed to be. Not everyone is. It's a hard truth to accept. God is saying the same thing. He's saying it's time for judgment. It's time for judgment. The time of judgment has come. Right? He says, Go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, see indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without a man, and the land be utter desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. Now here's the thing. Whenever God does judgment, He always preserves a remnant. And we should always be praying, Lord, let me be a part of that. Jesus said, pray without ceasing that you be accounted worthy to escape all of these things which is coming upon the earth and to stand before the Son of Man. God says he's going to wipe this thing out. But verse 13 says, But yet, in it shall be a tenth, and it shall, re and it shall return, and it shall be eaten, as a teal tree and as an oak whose substance is in them. When they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. And it came to pass in days of, Ahaz, of Ahaz, Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramallah, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. And it was told the house of David, saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim. And his heart was moved, and the heart of his people, and the trees and the wood are moved with the wind. Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, Go forth now, meet Ahaz, through thou and share just hub thy son at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the, hill, in the highway of the fuller's field, and say unto him, Take heed and be quiet, fear not, neither be faint-hearted for the two tails of these smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of Rezin with Syria and the son of, of Ramalia. Because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Ramalia have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, Let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us, and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabil. Then the portion wants us to move on to chapter 9 and read two verses to finish up the portion for this week, which says, for every battle of the warrior is confused noise, and the garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with the burning of fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Though your skins, though your sins be as scarlet, they should be white as snow. 
Though they be red as crimson, they shall be as wool. I want to encourage you to pray something that's kind of scary to pray. I prayed it this morning. It comes from Psalm 86.11. We began this podcast talking about the importance of the fear of God and how it's lacking. And it's because we just don't have a true understanding of who God really is and just how holy He really is. Psalm 86.11 says, Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. The psalmist is saying, Teach me to fear your name. Teach me to fear your name. Let me just start at the beginning of the psalm. Bow down thy ear, O Lord, and hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. Thou art my God. Save thy servant that trusteth in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Listen, the psalmist is saying, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I know that you're good. I know that you are just like ready to forgive. And your mercy is plenteous to anyone who calls upon you. Verse 6, give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. Amongst the gods there is none like unto thee. O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee. O Lord, and shall glorify thy name, for thou art great. And doest wondrous things, thou art God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I'll end with a strange dream I had last night. Uh, I believe I was on top of some kind of mountain and there was like a sanctuary or or something like that there. Okay? It, It was a place that the presence of God was, apparently. And I walk in and I'm immediately afraid. I'm afraid that I'm going to see an angel. Now listen, you you might think that's strange, but every time a person in the Bible encounters an angel, think of Daniel, they fall on their faces, trembling, and they're so afraid they can't even move. Okay? Again, we don't have the proper fear. (laughs) But in this dream, I was terrified. Terrified that I was going to see an angel, and I I was trying to exit... The, the the building, the temple or the sanctuary, whatever you want to call it, I don't know. And I'm getting lost and I can't seem to escape. <laughs> I'm trying to get out of the building and event- because I'm just terrified. And eventually I run into a small child, a little girl. And I'm like, do you know the way out? And she shows me the way out. And that was the end of the dream. I don't know what it means, other than it just goes along with this idea of this proper fear of God. So that's something I'm thinking about this week. Something I want you to think about. I want you to ponder. I want you to dwell on the holiness of God. Because when you really truly understand who God is, then you can get a real understanding of who you are and just how desperate you need. Jesus. Just how unable you are to do this on your own. It doesn't matter how much Hebrew you know. It doesn't matter how well you think you follow the law. It doesn't matter just how righteous you think you are. You are filthy rags before the Lord. And you can't really understand your desperate need for Jesus Christ and the covering of the blood and for God to purge the sin for you. You can't understand that until you really start to get a grasp of God's holiness. 
and how His holiness demands payment for sin that we are unable to pay. That is the gospel. That is why Jesus came and died. We were unable to do it ourselves. We just have to believe and trust in Him. Believe that God rose Him from the dead and rest in His salvation. I pray you've been blessed this morning. Only two podcasts this week. I've just uh, been pressed for time. And uh, this is the message that I felt I was supposed to deliver this week. Every once in a while that'll happen where we just kind of stray from the normal. And I have a word to give to you. And this is the word. Fear God. Fear God. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time, God bless.